Okay. I remember the first time, <laughs> it, it may have been about um, two or three years when we were in the theater yeah. when it first happened. So this place used to be a post office too, right? Uh, yeah, it was a post office. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, it was a post office all the way until they moved um, down the street to the, to the, the main post office that's there now. You know, theater is so unique because how many how many seats does this theater hold? A hundred? Yeah, so okay. hundred seats. So I feel like the last time we're here, we had the stage set up and it's so tight and enclosed, but it really gets you into that like, experience. And um, well, you know, with World Theater Day, I, I just want to ask you, what got you into theater? Because from what I've read, you've directed over a hundred plays, or do you do one every year here? Uh, yeah, I do one or two, and then I've done stuff at other theaters around town. Okay. The, the, back in 1990, mm -hmm. the theater took two plays to the Edinburgh Theater Festival, okay. and then I was lucky enough to go with them. And uh, at the time, I, I had just graduated from college, and I wasn't a theater major at all, mm -hmm. but I had been working on shows, and then the theater that I saw there just changed my life. You know, it was astounding to see um, the different styles, the different messages, the different stories that could be brought to life, mm -hmm. and then how they could be brought to life. And then after I saw that, I, I came back and I got my master's in directing for the theater. Nice. Mm -hmm. I love that. I kind of started sort of behind the scenes, and then it just took one production that really changed a lot for you. Do you remember what play that was that you saw? Uh, it, it was this play called, um, I think it was the sh short happy life of Dr. Yabuhara. Oh. And it was, it was a Japanese play that had been done like many years before, but they brought it to the festival and it was like at a main, at one of the main stages there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, it was amazing because if you know, there's, um, there's these people in Japanese theater who move the set around and yeah. then they're supposed to be invisible to the mm -hmm. audience. But, uh, these they were blind mm -hmm. meaning they would come out with white walking sticks and they'd start to move the things and they'd put it in the wrong place and the actors would come out and fall over oh my and then i i was like so then this is making a comment not only on the history of theater but it's like i don't know making fun of even just watching theater mm -hmm. and then i and then it made me think well you know i mean this is like a little bit deeper than just coming and watching a regular play. Yeah. And I wanted to see how I could tell stories through, you know, just how the theater works when it's live and how it creates stories in the imagination of the audience. Yes, wanting to expand on that. And I like how you said there's so many messages when it comes to these different productions and so many independent plays as well that happen here too, which is really cool. And we'll go ahead and go into more detail about World Theater Day. Thank you so much, Harry Wong. He's still gonna be with us. We appreciate his time. But if you want some more details about World Theater Day or any performing arts stories that we've covered in the past, or even to learn about the theater's history here in downtown. You can visit our website at khwin2.com. Reporting over here at the scene, Dallas and Averos, khwin2 News, working for Hawaii. Thank you, Dallas. 8.13 right now. Coming up, visiting the doctor can sometimes be scary for little ones. Yes, you know it. Well, we'll tell you how one clinic is trying to make that 